In December 2013, Bertha got stuck. Bertha is the name of the giant drill currently digging a tunnel underneath Seattle. Getting stuck is a big deal. Bertha can't go backwards, so engineers had to dig a hole 120 feet down, then drag Bertha's hatchet face up to the surface, fix it, then send it back down again. The process ended up taking two years. The most infuriating thing about this is that it's not even clear Seattle needs this tunnel. It's being built to replace the Alaskan Way Viaduct, a 1950s eyesore that's so fragile, Seattle drivers are instructed not to sneeze when they're driving on it. The new tunnel, though, isn't actually a very good replacement. It won't have any exits downtown, and it's going to charge a toll. That means that at least half the people using the current death trap won't use the new death trap because it costs money and doesn't actually take them where all the stuff is. So basically, this tunnel costs $4 billion, and it's going to make traffic even worse. There's something predictable about all this. Big infrastructure projects always take too long and cost too much. They always fail to live up to the promises of the engineers and politicians behind them. So the question is, why do cities and countries keep doing this? If almost all the mega projects in the past have been failures, why do they keep getting proposed for the future? Let's face it, mega projects get attention. They're covered in the media, they leave a legacy, they create a big fat monument you can put your name on. And that's sort of the problem. Politicians don't want to build water pipes or update the sewer system or switch to a more efficient accounting standard. They want to get reelected. That means building things like stadiums and convention centers and fancy new bridges. Even though in most cases, cities don't actually need that stuff. That's what happened in Seattle. In 2007, voters rejected a referendum to dig this tunnel. The option they wanted was improving the roads and putting hella buses on them. But then, in 2009, the governor stepped in. And said she was going to build the tunnel anyway. But don't worry, she promised it would go okay. So I want to first address, if I can, those who still say we can't get it done. We can't get it done on time, but we can't get it on, done on budget. I'm here to say, watch us. We're going to get it done. Are you fu- Architects and engineers have the same incentives as politicians. They want to build something iconic, something they can brag to their colleagues about. This is why these projects are never like a medium bridge or a standard skyscraper. They're always the tallest or the longest or the deepest. Bertha is the largest tunneling machine in the world. No one has ever attempted a tunnel this wide, this deep. If it breaks, no one knows how to repair it, and there's nowhere to order replacement parts. Plus, just to make this more ridiculous, the soil it's tunneling through is right next to a giant body of water. We don't really know what's under there. We've got a general idea of uh, how many boulders there might be and what size they might be, but there's no guarantee that there couldn't be a 20-footer sitting in the way. So basically, engineers are using their host city as a guinea pig to try out new techniques and technologies. You're welcome. The nice thing about mega projects is that they create a ton of work for everyone. Labor unions like them because they create jobs. Construction companies like them because they create big, long contracts. Consultants like them because stuff has to be studied over and over again and then fixed when it goes wrong. The only thing mega projects don't have is anyone going, wait a minute, could we be spending this money on something people actually need? Most mega projects are super pretty. People like having beautiful buildings and wonderful bridges in their towns. So when your politician stands on a podium and tells you that this sexy new project is finally going to put Cleveland or Pittsburgh or Fresno on the map, you're like, hell yeah. The best example of this is San Francisco's Bay Bridge. The original plan was to spend a few hundred million on something standard and functional. But then voters were like, no, it's right next to the Golden Gate. We want something iconic. So engineers added a signature span, the longest of its kind in the world, and it ended up costing six billion. So these are all the reasons why mega projects keep getting built and keep sucking. So what can we do to improve their track record? Bertha isn't the only tunneling machine underneath Seattle right now. There's two more in North Seattle digging smaller tunnels for the new light rail system. So far, they haven't really had any problems. They're medium-sized, a standard model that gets used in cities around the world. 
If they break, there's even a loner sitting on reserve to replace them. Seattle's next light rail station is opening on time and under budget. Mega projects don't have to be boondoggles. Decades ago, Norway decided to stop building bigger and bigger dams. They just build the same medium one over and over again, and they don't go over budget anymore. This beautiful building looks like it should have been impossible to finish on time, but the engineers had experience working with this architect. They had done this before. And it turns out that's the key to successful mega projects. Let the construction companies experiment on someone else's city. Back in Seattle, in December 2015, Bertha started digging again. It was only 10% finished with the tunnel when it got stuck. Engineers said it would go the rest of the way without any problems. But then, three weeks later, Bertha stopped again. A sinkhole the size of a swimming pool opened up 100 feet behind the drill. The contractors say it's a coincidence, and the tunnel will still open in 2018. And you know, since they've never done anything like this before, and no one else has either, I'm sure we can trust them.